before we try our hands on problem solving, let's go over some very useful problem solving procedures for this unit. Step 1. Identify the direction of acceleration, if possible. Step 2. Draw force diagram, or what we call free body diagram. Step 3. Write the force equation. By that I mean the net force equals to ma, the second law equation. Step 4. Solve for whatever unknown you have to find. And that's it. For the force diagram, we will draw all of the forces acting on an object. In order to be thorough, I have a systematic way. Some forces do not require contact. I'll call them non-contact force. What forces between two objects do not require the objects to touch each other? Gravity is one example. The Earth does not have to touch this marker to pull on it with a gravitational force. Electric force and magnetic force do not require contact either. But in this unit, we're not going to worry about electric and magnetic forces. So we will just have gravity or gravitational force which is also the weight of an object. And the weight equals to mg, the mass, times the gravitational acceleration. For forces that require contact, or contact force, we can have contact surface. A contact surface can give us uh, two forces, normal force, and the friction. For normal force, we write F sub N or capital N. Normal in mass terms means perpendicular. The force from this table holding the book is normal force, perpendicular to the contact surface. If I put this book on my hand, I would have to exert the same normal force upward and perpendicular to this contact surface. And this contact surface pushes. Normal force cannot pull. Normal force is always perpendicular to the contact surface. And it's a pushing force. For friction, we write F sub FR for friction force. Now I'm pushing on the book to the right. If I don't push hard enough, the book does not move. If it stays at rest, that means that the net force act on, acting on it must be zero. The gravity acting on the book is canceled by the normal force. Which force do you think cancels my pushing force? It's the friction from the table. So if I push on the book so it has a tendency to slide to the right, friction will go to the left parallel to the contact surface. If I push hard enough so the book slides to the right, there is also a friction to the left. Again, this friction is parallel to the contact surface. So friction is always parallel to the contact surface. And it is either against the tendency to slide or against the sliding motion. Another kind of contact is a string. A string can give us uh, tension. For tension, we write F sub T or capital T for tension. A string can only pull. A string cannot push. So a tension is uh, a pulling force. Then we have applied force. I'm not a 
Jedi. So if I want to apply a force on an object, I'll have to have contact with the object. And uh, it basically is either a push or a pull. So these cover most of the forces we will see in mechanics. And the mechanics is probably the first two-fifths of the course. So let's look at some examples now. They are very simple, so please use this chance to build a good habit of following the problem-solving procedures. When the problems are simple, you may say, why bother with these procedures? However, if you do not build a good habit now, you may run into trouble later when things get more complicated. I cannot emphasize enough how important these procedures are. The first example, we have this 2 kilogram book sitting on the table. We want to identify and find each of the forces acting on this book. So we have the book on the table. And let's follow the problem solving procedures. First, we have to identify the direction of acceleration. The book just sits there, stays at rest. So the acceleration is zero there's no direction for acceleration. And then we're supposed to draw the force diagram to show all the forces acting on the box, the book. To draw the force diagram, you don't really have to draw a picture of the book or whatever. Okay, we can just draw a dot to represent the object. You can draw the dot right here, or you can draw a dot on the side. I'm just going to use a dot to represent the book over here. Okay. For the forces, we have non-contact force and contact force. The only non-contact force over here is the gravitational force, mg. And gravity only always pulls straight down. So you got the straight down, mg. Mass times the gravitational acceleration will be 2 times, uh, I'm just going to round the g to 10, so the mg will be 20 newtons. All of the other forces require contact, which means uh, we can just look at the picture and see what the book is touching. The book is touching the table, so you got a contact surface. A contact surface can give us uh, normal force and the friction. And normal force is always perpendicular to the surface and a push force. So this contact surface will push on the book push on the book, the force is perpendicular to the contact surface, so the normal force goes uh, upward. Now let's see, friction is either against the tendency to slide or against the sliding motion. The book is not sliding, but let's see if there is a tendency to slide or not. Does the book have any tendency to slide to the right or the left? It doesn't have a sliding motion. It does not have a tendency to slide either. So there is no friction. Only normal force from the surface. Is the book touching anything else? No. That means uh, this is it. Those are all the forces we have. If it's not touching anything else, there are no other forces. So next step, we're supposed to write the net force equals to ma. Since the acceleration is zero, the net force would be zero. If these two forces have to give us a net force that's zero, that must mean the up and down, they are equal. The normal force must equal to 20 newtons. Which makes sense, because the normal force, a pushing force, tells us how hard the two surfaces are pressed against each other. So these two forces, these two surfaces, they're pressed against each other by how much? The book pushes down on the table with its weight, 20 newtons. So it makes sense for the normal force to be 20 newtons. Another thing is, we used to, in the kinematics, we would say 
up is positive, down is negative. So you can say the normal force is a positive number, and the downward mg is negative 20. And the, the net force is 0, which means the sum of all of the forces is 0. That means the, the normal force plus negative 20 should equal to 0, which gives you normal force is positive 20, upward 20 exactly the same thing as what we have over here. But in forces, you're going to find out, you're going to see that I don't use uh, up positive, down negative, just because we're going to have forces that's slanted in all kinds of directions. So I'm just going to look at the picture and look at the direction, and you'll see in future examples. What if I come along and pull on the string upward with 5 newtons? Again, we want to identify and find each of the forces acting on this book. Now let's follow the problem solving procedures again. Identify the direction of acceleration. Now you're pulling on the book with a string upward 5 newtons. The book weighs 20 newtons, so that is not enough to lift the book. So the book still stays at rest on the table. So the acceleration is zero. There is no direction for the acceleration. And then draw the force diagram. Again, I'm drawing a dot to represent the book. The only non-contact force we have is mg, which is 20 newtons. The book is touching the contact surface. So again, you have normal force. And again, there is no tendency to slide. It doesn't have a tendency to slide left or right. And there is no sliding motion either. So there is no friction. So for the contact surface, it only gives us normal force, no friction. And this time, the book is also touching this applied force 5 newtons. So I'm going to draw this 5 newtons up here. Oh, by the way, we always draw the forces coming out of the dot. We don't draw the forces going into the dot. So no more force, even though it's pushing on the book, we don't draw it on this side. We draw it coming out of on the other side. So it's a little more convenient to look at. Okay. So that's what we have. It's not touching anything else, so we're done with the force diagram. And then we write the net force equals to ma. And again, the acceleration is zero, so the net force is zero. That means, again, the upward forces and the downward force, they must be equal, so they can cancel. So 5 plus the normal force must equal to the downward 20 newtons. Therefore, the normal force is 15 newtons. Now, it makes sense for the normal force to be 15 newtons, less than its weight, 20. Because you're lifting the box with 5 newtons. That means the book does not push down on the table as hard as before. So the book seems lighter to the table lighter by 5 newtons, so it's 15 newtons. What if instead of pulling upward with 5 newtons, I push down on the book with 5 newtons? How much would the normal force be? This time, we may not have to bother to go through the procedures, because uh, we know that the normal force must be 20 plus 5, 25 newtons because uh, this downward 5 newtons is making the book seem heavier to the table. The two surfaces here press against each other with 25 newtons, the downward 20 newtons weight plus this extra 5 newtons. So 25 newtons.